Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is James Faulkner. I'm the editor of Master Investor. I'm joined today by Claire Noyce, who's the founding partner at Hybrid and Stockbrokers. We're here to discuss the Small Cap Awards, um, and the purpose of today's discussion is to give our audience a bit of a, an insight into what goes on, on behind the scenes, particularly with regard to the selection criteria and the judging process. Um, but to, give, to, to begin with, Claire, um, given that you're the chair of the judging panel, can you give our audience um, a bit of an insight into what the awards are there to showcase and to recognise? Of course. Thank you, James. And, and lovely to, to be chatting to you and your audience today. So um, really, it's, it's a chance for the community to get together. So uh, companies, brokers, nomads, corporate finance firms, accountants, lawyers, NEDs, PRs, the Quota Companies Alliance come along, the London Stock Exchange always come along, an Aquis Exchange, um, the old necks, um, I'm sure, will, would have been present. Um, and, and then those investors, importantly, who make the, um, the SME universe tick, um, the investors themselves, hugely important. Um, and what about the judging panel? Because obviously you and I are on that panel, um, but we sit alongside some pretty, pretty um, hard hitters in the investment universe. So just give us a bit of a, a flavour as to who those people are. Of course. So I started off on the panel as a judge myself and, and was asked to, to step up as chair. And I've changed the format of the panel over the last few years a little bit, James, to comprise mainly investors. Um, I think amongst the investor universe, it's important to have a diverse range of that community represented. So um, we have generalist small cap fund managers like Premier Mighton and Downing, um, some specialists of dominant sectors on AIM, such as Canaccord Genuity Fund Management, who's uh, Mulgrew and Nano and Micro Funds look at a number of sectors on AIM, including technology. Um, then we have the EIS funds, hugely important, Calculus Capital, LGB Investments, Seneca Partners, and then the VCT funds, Octopus Investments, Maven Capital, Downing again, um, as well as Calculus and, and Seneca, who also run VCT monies. Um, and actually this year, with the increasing speed of the de-equitization of the SME listed markets, um, retail has become more important, retail access. So this year I invited the CEO of Primary Bid um, to, judge, uh, to join the judging panel. And of course yourself, James, and, and myself, um, that makes 13 uh, judges in all. I probably should mention we have an accounting firm um, and actually Helen was hugely insightful on a number of companies we're discussing and just pointed to things in the company accounts. And then we have Richard um, Gill from an independent research firm um, as a judge on the panel too. And I think James, you and I represent the um, journalist PR community and yourself pertinent to the retail space and your listeners. Um, and in my role at Hybrid Dan can speak for the broken community. So a very good spread then. And, and also what about the main award categories? Because th those do change slightly from year to year because we try to keep that sort of relevant to what's actually going on at the time. So just give us a brief overview of the, the main categories this year. Yeah, you, you've just hit the nail on the head. We try to keep it relevant every year. So the main award categories, we always kick off with IPO of the year. Um, last year's winner, if you remember, was Cakebox Holdings PLC. And then we have a number of the other um, awards that you will see at all City Awards ceremonies. So Company of the Year, Executive Director of the Year. Um, Mike Creed and the CEO of Scientific Digital Imaging PLC won that award last year. Then there's Transaction of the Year, Analyst of the Year, Journalist of the Year. Simon Thompson from Investors Chronicle has scooped that and previously Paul Scott also. Um, so we like many award ceremonies also have a UK Smaller Companies Fund Manager of the Year. Um, which has previously been won by Old Mutual, UK Smaller Companies and Melbourne Nanocat Growth. Um, and then we have a, a few awards that are new um, and some which feature some years but not every year depending as you've said, as, as you've said James, on um, market trends. So this year we felt the need for a technology company of the year and innovative financing of the year since innovative financings have featured more and more over the past few years. Um, we have Impact Company of the Year again. ESG and impact investing is becoming so important, um, such an important mandate across many fund management organizations and groups. And we also have another new one this year, VCT Manager of the Year, and um, one that, that I decided I particularly wanted us to have 
as recognition of all the support that this investor universe provides to our SME markets. And one reason for that, VCT funds typically don't feature in all the statistics out there on best, perform best performing fund analysis. So wanted to have them in a separate category. And, and then my favorite um, lifetime achievement award, which is usually announced on the night. There's not a short list of such announced. Um, so that will be announced online with the other winners towards the end of June. And a very special award for those who have supported the small and mid cap market for decades usually. So last year we had the very wonderful Andrew Buchanan of Octopus Investments um, pick up this prestigious title. In 2018, um, I was delighted to present the award to the totally amazing Katie Potts of Herald Investment Management. So it, it's a nice set of awards that we sit and consider long and short lists for. And what about the decision making process? Um, because like investing itself, this is it's a bit of an art form, isn't it? Rather than a, an exact science. Exactly, quite. Um, so as chairman, I send out the categories to my judges earlier in the year, um, in January usually, and then the judges feed in as many good ideas across all those categories I just mentioned as they can. Um, Richard Giller to Line Research is super helpful at this point actually. He helps me to do some basic analysis on market capitalization, share price performance, headline financials, and then we compile what we call the long list. And then if we, you recall, James, you came over to our offices at Hybridan for March, early March, and we sit down with a very long list and we discuss every idea across every category to try to come up with about six per category. Um, for some awards, we started with 30, 40 ideas. Um, IPO of the year was, was rather a thin category to choose from um, for 2019. Um, and I should just say the parameters that we judge, it's calendar year 2019, the market cap cutoff is 200 million at the upper end, so 200 million sterling market cap at the upper end on either the 1st of January 2019 or the first day of the IPO. So it's not true to say that bigger companies win all the glory at, at um, these events. And then to answer your question, um, how we judge. So as you say, it's an art, not a science. So we obviously look at some of the science, so share price performance, liquidity, and, but also look at factors such as management, engagement with investors in the advisory community, and um, use of the market, fundraisings, transactions, investor relations profile generally. Um, sometimes companies have had a great 2019, but they're just a little bit nascent and too early to be on our list right now. And we do tuck those away and bring them out the next year. And then interestingly, particular pertinent to this year, we have to look into 2020 a little bit. Um, companies may have had a great 2019, but then um, something dreadful happens the following year, earlier in the year. So, um, however, I'm pleased to say that across some 40 companies on the shortlist soon to be announced, none of them have had any share price or business hiccups in 2020. Um, so our shortlist of six per category that you and I and, um, and, and 11 others, James, chose in early March at that lunch, thank goodness, they, they are the same companies, which I think is important to mention because it's testament to the stock picking quality of the judges, their insight, their shrewdness, um, as well as the fact that there's actually some fantastic SMEs out there listed in the UK, and despite at times the negative press that AIM and, um, and, and other markets attract at the smaller end. So, um, you know, what a, a thriving sector the, the SMEs are in the UK. Um, to have 40 companies that we picked earlier in the year that, that, that still look like top picks. And, um, you know, what amazing stakeholders in the ecosystem. So um, I probably should mention the judges by name just to thank them. So I'll, I'll try and remember them all. So thanks really to all of them, Dale Bellis, Alexandra Lindsay, James Deal, yourself, James, um, Guy Felt, Richard Gill, Connor Grimes, Helen James, Judith McKenzie, Dominic Weller, um, Simone Westerhouse, and not least, um, uh, Gervais Williams. Thank you all. Um, if you haven't cast your votes, please send them to me. I'll be chasing you shortly. Um, and then just, just to add, if there's any kind of um, questions about, well, fund manager of the year, you have fund managers on the panel. Analyst of the year, you have brokers on the panel. So um, the view sell side judges don't vote on, vote on analyst of the year. 
And the investors who are judges don't vote on the fund manager of the year or VCT of the year. The sell side judges have a more general discussion on the investor awards um, for those investor awards, and they're largely down to performance. Um, the Lifetime Achievement Award, just to, just to mention that for a, a quick second, um, that's discussed at the lunch that we have in March. We, we normally have a maximum of, of two or three ideas, and, and we decide that there and then, and it's all kept super secret by, um, by a special 13, and we reach consensus on it there and then, and it's such a lovely award, it kind of, um, it, you know, it, it's normally very easy to come to a conclusion together. And I'll be discussing the um, shortlist later this week with Neil Pearson. Um, just to finish, um, why is it important that we recognise the achievement of smaller companies? And this is quite a pertinent question given what's going on in the, the current um, coronavirus crisis, isn't it? I think so. I think it's, it's more important than ever. And I think the format that Master Investor are going to take with it going online is, is just going to be fantastic. I mean, you know, we've had the Woodford saga of 2019. H hate to mention it, but, you know, another dent to our SME world, really. And it was small caps that bore the brunt. So many small cap fund managers had the minimum market caps increased to four or five hundred million sterling, leaving a large void for, for the very nano cap and small cap companies out there. So awards like this help recognize those loyal stakeholders of the small cap community who have kept funding SMEs throughout. And as you say, James, even in these very challenging pandemic times, it's more important than ever that the support network um, that enables UK entrepreneurs to flourish, innovate and create wealth and employment comes together to help each other to best navigate this new normal and to let the amazing companies and backers see how much we appreciate their tenacity. Um, as you said, we can't have our annual dinner, but we're having this chat, James, and then I understand that you and Master Investor um, who are running the awards for the first time this year will announce our shortlist later in the week and you'll have various discussions with other people so there'll be online events to attend i must say as an aside i'm, I'm finding the online events and, um, and and webinars hugely enjoyable and educational so some kind of online event to announce the winners at the end of june i'm, I'm very much looking forward to so um, thanks to Master Investor and my judges for all their input and wisdom and you, James, for joining the panel for the first time um, this year and, yeah, hoping to see everyone in person soon. That's great. Thanks very much for your time today, Claire. Um, it's great to hear that the, the shortlist is doing well um, and I look forward to seeing you at the virtual awards. Look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thanks for calling, James. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye-bye now. Bye.